I want to welcome everyone here tonight to a very sad but important reading. Um, tonight's going to be a new fable and it's for Joseph Filipowski. Joseph Filipowski was one of the most amazing people I have ever had the privilege of meeting. He was a boat builder, storyteller, historian, character actor, all around amazing human being. And we lost him this past week. And uh, Joe and I had just uh, met in January Joe had asked me to go to lunch at Ten Top so that we could talk about his project, which he said was going to be his magnum opus. It was going to be a um, boat building project to do replicas of great sailing ships, full size, full scale, op sail level. And then COVID-19 hit and everything got kind of put to the side, but I did notice that every single night, just about, of, I think we're on night 63 or 64 or 65 tonight, because I've been reading every night throughout COVID-19 and storytelling, and Joe, the consummate storyteller, um, started showing up, and it was always a bright spot to see Joe there um, watching live and then leaving comments or sending me a little note. So tonight is for Joe Filipowski. Um, it's also for uh, Tom Brandall, who runs Tidewater Wooden Boat, um, and for a very special young man named James Backus, who attended and learned so much and spent so much time with Joe and with Tom. And so... Uh, I, I read a piece very, very early on in these readings that was one of my favorite stories. It's called The Leaf and the Wind, also known as Heaven's Dust. And it was the story of the leaf that fell in love with the wind and the very angry tree. Um, sometimes I like to bring those characters around full circle. So as I sat here thinking about Joe, uh, it just hit me. So I like to feel like he was kind of sitting on my shoulder today while I was writing this one. It's called Tree's Transformation. The tree had slept for so long as a pile of milled boards that it hardly remembered its days standing. It tried to remember the sun, the rain, wind, and sky, but it all seemed so long ago and far away. The tree remembered getting old and falling hard during a storm. Deep inside, it could recall the feelings of being lifted and carried far away. Then a pair of old rough hands settled on it, and the tree felt a familiar warmth. An old man's voice spoke to the tree, but all the tree heard was the voice of a little boy it had once known. I've got you, said the voice. It's Joseph. Joseph. That name brought the memories flooding back. It had been a sad and angry tree. It recalled spending its life berating its own leaves for their love of the wind. It remembered that one leaf that had defied its best efforts to make it fall down in sadness and despair. It was haunted by how that could have come to pass. Tree remembered how wind had whistled haunting tunes through its branches, how it whispered and sometimes it sang. On many days, wind told leaf of the places it had been. All across the rivers and down to the sea have I been, whispered wind. On that day, the tree could even smell the scent of the water in the salty places of which the wind spoke. This had made the tree rooted to the one spot, very jealous and even more angry. So it bullied the leaves even more. High up to the mountain, to the very door of heaven today, the wind told, as the fresh clean smells settled down on the angry tree. 
I have seen where the blue sky ends and the birds cease to wing. I have heard the voice of life itself and it is so beautiful. Leaf had shuddered with the thought of having life speak to it as it did to wind. When will life speak to me? Leaf had asked the wind. The breeze warmed it as it blew over the tree and the wind said softly, you can hear life's voice in me. Whenever it blew past, be it breeze or gale, the little green leaf waved a joyful greeting to the wind like the hand of a happy child to a loved one. Tree heard the leaf whisper to the wind. I will love you for all time. I could not be happier. Tree remembered how hearing this promise, it had shaken hard and emitted a large, deep chuckle. I am glad you're happy now, Tree remembered saying. Enjoy your youth and beauty while you can, for soon enough you'll be withered and brown, dry as dust and blown away with the same breeze that stirs your heart today. But when that day came, the leaf had reveled in its new state. It had been carried by the wind to every corner of the world, across rivers and up into clouds where it had rained down, become part of lakes, rivers, and even the sea. For decades, the tree had held on to its anger until one day, a little boy named Joseph insisted on climbing its trunk to sit in its branches and talk to it. The little boy spoke to the tree as if it were his only friend in the world, because it was. He told the tree stories of how he would someday build a fine boat and sail away far from the bullies. The wind would fill the sails he would sow and away he would go. The wind again! The tree wailed to itself and he tried to shake the boy off. But little Joseph only put his arms around the tree and he hugged it for dear life. The old tree had never been hugged before felt the warmth of the child seeping into its very core. Little Joseph was bullied for being smaller than the others. He came to the tree for protection and the tree began to give it. Come down from that stupid, ugly old tree, the boys called. That tree's dying, it can't protect you forever. The tree tripped the boys with its roots, sent fire ants to torment them and shook until sharp sticks rained on them like little arrows. The boy grew older. The tree began to feel the weight of its age. And when the great storm came at last, the wind sang the tree to sleep so that it wouldn't feel the pain of falling. The wind had witnessed the tree's change of heart and decided to help out both the tree and Joseph. Joseph grew up to be a fine shipbuilder with his own little workshop where he and his good friend Thomas taught children who'd been bullied how to build their dreams out of wood and goodwill. The wind was rather crafty in its own way and it made sure that a piece of newspaper with a picture of the great tree that had fallen was blown right onto Joseph's workbench. Joseph set right out to buy the tree from the owner and he had it brought to his workshop where he gently laid his hands on the trunk. We must all fall someday, he said to the tree. How about if I make it so that we can both live on together? Joseph had the sleeping tree sent to the miller who turned it into boards. And then Joseph and the children gathered in his workshop to bring the tree back to its new life as a beautiful little rowboat. Tree awoke feeling lighter, free of all its old fears. Joseph whispered down to the new boards, I know that you and the wind didn't always see eye to eye. So I won't give you a sail. Instead, I've given you oars and many children whose lives you'll help to hold up safely as you once did me. With each day, the tree heard the children planning, measuring, learning about mathematics and how boats float. Tree warmed to the idea of them giving new life to it and in turn, giving new opportunities to them. Tree especially warmed to a boy named James. It was because James had a very special ability. He could feel more deeply because he'd felt more pain than most. While others got splinters, 
The boards would never allow James to get one. I know you gave a splinter to that kid who was grouchy with me the other day, whispered James to the little boat that was taking shape beneath his hands. I'll make sure you get some extra glossy paint. Because you and me, we're friends now. We're going to be all right. Joseph cocked his head when he heard James speaking to the little boat. That's right there, young fella, Joseph said. Always be patient. Always be kind. Take care of your ship, and it'll take care of you. While they worked, Joseph told tales of the sea and his adventures, and he taught the children all of the interesting bits of history that he'd learned from books made from the pieces and pages of other trees. You see, children, Joseph explained one day, everything on our planet passes from one state of being to another. When I pass away, my body will become part of the soil, which will become part of a tree that may become a book or a boat that will share with us its joy of being something new. And so it was that the tree was reborn as a fine little rowboat that carried James far and wide. Joseph's wisdom and works live on for as long as there is wind, water, trees, children, the sky, little ships, and stars to guide them by. Well, I made it all the way to the end of that without needing all the Kleenex. Well, Joseph Filipowski will be greatly missed because boys like James learned more than just measuring and they learned that when you have a hammer, not everything has to be a nail. James and other kids learned history, joy, skills, laughter, hard work, how to take care of their ship so the ship will take care of them and how to take care of other people and how to take care and protect themselves. I really hope that each and every one of you tonight, uh, if you remember Joe, and even if you don't, if the story moved you in any way, please give generously to Tidewater Wooden Boat Workshop. I will put the link in the comments. If they don't have a way for you to give, I will set up a GoFundMe for them in his name because good works like Joe's have to continue because good kids like James are gonna keep coming and they're gonna need that workshop and everything it's got in it. Thank you very much. I love you all. I miss you, Joe. Good night.